Hi, this is Gilles, the radio prepper. With a video today, I can't believe I haven't made sooner. It's about the SWR, standing wave ratio. What is it? Is it important? I'm going to try to explain that and uh, dispel some misconceptions. Now, some people think it's complicated. <laughs> really, not that much. SWR is the ratio of power that goes out of your transmitter versus the power that is not reflected by the antenna and come back to your radio. And I know some people are going to say, oh, it's not like that, it's more complicated. Yes, <laughs> it is more complicated. I am making videos so that anybody without a PhD in mathematics can understand and I can understand because I certainly don't have that level. When you transmit a signal, that power goes towards the, the antenna. If the antenna is the correct length and is resonant, most of that power is radiated and not much, if at all, comes back to the radio and that's how it should be. Now, if your antenna is not quite the right size, then some of that power is going to come back and it's going to heat up your final transistors and in some cases can destroy them. When I started CB at the tender age of about 14, <laughs> uh, SWR was the king. You had to have a very low SWR, 1 to 1, 1 1.1 to 1, 1.2 to 1. And certainly, certainly not above 1.5 to 1, oh my god. Is it really that important? And of course the answer is no, <laughs> it's not. Not that important. It's important for one thing and one thing only, in my mind anyway, in my opinion, is that it can damage your radio. Some radios have a tolerance of about a 2 to 1 SWR. Some radios can go up to 3 to 1. Some radios have, you know, pretty much infinite uh, tolerance for high SWR. And I'm talking about uh, tube radios, the old kind, and military radios. Now, how do military radios, modern military radios, do that? And it's very simple. They use final transistors that are rated very, very high. Say, for instance, you take the RF-1, I think it's the RF-1 um, Czech Republic uh, military radio. The output is 1 watt, and the final transistor is a 16 watt transistor. And that solves the problem. Now, you might ask, why don't they use that for amateur radio? And the answer is simple. Also, it's cost. It would cost <laughs> very, you know, it would make very expensive radios uh, to include uh, much higher rated transistors. And of course, they can't do that. So they sell you a transistor that's, you know, rated much lower, uh, that will tolerate maybe a 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 uh, SWR. And so you actually are going to buy the radio because it's not too expensive. But yes, your radio can be damaged if too much SWR, too much power is reflected back to the radio. And there are some actually uh, watt meters that will show you, I think it's here, forward and reflected power. So you can see the power that goes out and that's what you use most of the time and you can see the power that comes back. For those who like formulas and I'm not one of them, here it is. PF is uh, power forward and uh, PR is power reflected. A simple SWR device, uh, however, well this one is also a watt meter, but will show you uh, a simple ratio on the screen. And usually uh, we try not to go above uh, what the manufacturer recommends. One thing that you have to know about SWR is that it doesn't reflect, well maybe that's not the right term reflect, but <laughs> it's not a good uh, metric of the efficiency of your antenna. Take this for instance, that's a dummy load and it has a 50 ohm resistor inside that box. If you plug that in your antenna, your, your radio, as an antenna, it will show a perfect SWR, one, one to one, 1 to 1, 1 to 1 to 1, you know, it'll be great. Is it a good antenna? No, it doesn't radiate practically, you know, it radiates practically nothing. 
And the same can be true of an antenna that's not cut to the correct length. There are even antennas that do not have a 50 ohm natural impedance. Now people will fit them with a 50 ohm cable into a 50 ohm radio, then they'll cut the antenna so that they get, you know, a one point something two three SWR, and they think that the antenna is uh, at its peak efficiency, which just isn't true. Uh, you might have cut your antenna to the wrong length. SWR is only important if you go above the maximum for the radio that the radio can take, and that's it. Today, that I've been a, uh, an amateur radio uh, you know, licensee <laughs> for more than 10 years, I don't care. I don't care about SWR. I mean, I don't care. I care that I don't exceed the maximum. But other than that, it doesn't matter because the losses are pretty minimal. You can see on this chart here that for a 2 to 1 SWR, you only lose 11% of your signal. That's not a whole lot, you know? Who cares? Mathematically insignificant. Now, 3 to 1, that's starting to get at 25%. And yeah, that's a bit much. But you know what you can do? Uh, if you have a uh, SWR that's a little bit too high, and say you have a 100 watt radio, lower your power output. Lower your power output to 10 watts. You won't have any problem with a 3 to 1 SWR then, because the uh, final transistor or transistors can take it. Now, of course, if you're using QRP, you're only using 5 watts. Do you really want to lose 25% of your signal? Eh, not really. And it's better in that case to have a resonant antenna. Now, of course, we use tuners, you know, uh, but the problem with the tuner is that it doesn't make your antenna better. It just lowers your SWR at the radio. But that's it. The SWR at the antenna remains the same. So always try to have a resonant antenna but you don't have to care that much about SWR as long as it won't damage your radio. And that's all I wanted to say. Have a good one.